Time to review 9.3 and let's go ahead and get this done. Let's get this done, guys. DLDR, Syndicate, no nerfs. Monsters took a bunch of nerfs and a lot of cards got buffed. Let's break it down. Starting off with the neutrals. Man, it's so good. It's so good being a creative deck builder, guys. It is the best. Why? Because when I see this, if you are a meta player, you look at this and you say, maybe there's something here. I look here and I see so many cool decks we get to make. It is beautiful. Just Brazilian high, perfect Sanzaro. I'm glad I didn't get tricked. Let's go and dive into this. So Arrakis Venom goes from seven to five. That's actually a pretty big buff. That's like a two, when you go two steps, it's a huge amount. Because if you kill a unit of this and there's two units next to it, that is a nine for five and it's organic. So for something like Arrakis Swarm, it can potentially be a 10 for five. Keep, keep an eye on this. It's, it's a bigger buff than it initially looks. Be interested though. Downside is though the faction that benefits from it most, which would be monsters of Arrakis Swarm because of the organic tag. Uh, it's hard for monsters to do a lot of direct damage, setting things up to make sure this always hits. It'll be interesting. Elf Onion Suit buff. The, no, uh, the all gold Skellige deck that Fuchsia Briefs created continues to deliver value with some craziness there. That's... Battle, I have to say for the card. Shoop's day off. Woo, baby. Ba -ba 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 Did somebody say shoop buff? Shoop buff. Ooh. That means like all my decks I made, it just got better. Which is kind of low key what's happening in this patch is every deck I made for 9.2 just got better because they're usually giving, getting rid of provisions on certain cards to just make them better. Uh, shoop day off getting buffed means, man, Casino Lippy, another variant? By all means, you look forward to it. There goes Muzzle. Also, by the way, actually, I want to comment on this, Shoop. I'm going to skip, actually, the bottom. I don't know why they're not put together. Redea also got a buff. Shoop Redea may be able to be good enough to see meta in something. Like, this is not a small buff. Redea is pretty consistently a 13 for 11 with flexibility. Shoop is pretty much a 14 for 12 with flexibility. And potentially, like, a 60%-ish chance on answering any card in the game. So, keep an eye out, actually, for this entering meta. Shoop is not a weak card at 12. Redea is a very good card at 11. Even better than Shoop. Both of them are pretty darn insane. So keep an eye on those guys. Keep an eye on those. Vigo's Muscle. Again, Elf Onion Soup. Vigo's Muscle. Man, that Fuchsia Brief deck is brilliant. It's getting all of the buffs. Like, Casino Lippi's getting a lot of buffs. His deck's getting a lot of buffs. It's good stuff. Good stuff. All My Dragon's Dream, my Double Dragon's Dream deck got buffed. Is this good enough to see actual viable play outside of Hilarity? No, no, no. Am I going to probably do Scoia Tail Salamander again with Double Dragon's Dream? Oh, yeah. Chris Butterfly? That is not a small. That is not a small buff. That is a big buff. Going any Anytime you see something change by two numbers, it's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing. It can go from unplayable to really playable. Here, keep an eye on this, because Triss is pretty much guaranteed to be a 12 for 9. Because the whole point of Triss is it's a random unit in hand, right? Random unit in hand gets buffed by 4, which is a huge downside. Random, but if I play my second to last card, my other card in my hand is a Glace or Skags. It's quite strong. It is quite strong. So keep an eye on that. Probably going good to see you here. As well as Henry D. Hello, hello. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it going. But keep an eye. Yeah, Tris, keep an eye on this. Glace, Glace. I don't know if it's going to. It's definitely not the card that says it's going to define the meta. But a Glace, tier three, or just like climbable with, maybe. Thesis Blaze, still unplayable probably until they give Thesis Blaze the actual tag, they, or uh, Zeal. It's order, five, deal damage to an enemy unit, five. Deal five. This might be playable also if they get rid of Regis's initiative problem. Or I could play Blaze and they don't kill it, set up the perfect Regis and smack it. They'll never do either of those. So, Blaze will be blah. I've never seen this uh, Triss played. Yeah, I feel like, I mean, this is the moment. Good, good call out there. And Centaur, Kos... Four. Welcome to the chat. Yeah, I mean this chat. This go butterfly real fast. Just butterflies. Yeah, nobody plays this card, and it's a bad card. It's it's a card that back way back in the days to be pretty busted, if I recall. These days, very much, very much uh, a power corrupt card. They're trying to bring it back, and that took us four. Welcome to the plane talk, fam. I'm glad you joined us here today as we check out the local aquarium. Welcome aboard. Like what you see, check out the socials, YouTube, Discord, Twitter. Welcome to the family. Oh, wrong view. That's the view I'm looking for. But welcome. Yeah, some of these cards you're just going to have to look up. 
afterwards. Ragnaro. Uh, it's four rounds of Cataclysm. Keep an eye on this of Vandermaker. It's actually not terrible of Vandermaker. But it is weather. It is slow. But potentially a 12 for 9. There's not really any. There's no like weather clear in the game currently. So not might not be too bad. Keep an eye on this. Garrison, I was so excited for this to get buffed until the Arch Griffin deck with Patience got exi or existed. Because I used to run Garrison, the old Arch Griffin Hyper Thin list. But the Patience version did not get any, no nerfs, but oh my gosh, the sub. What I was saying is Garrison's pretty useless. That's what I was saying. Mr. Hinnerk, Mr. Hinnerk, thank you so much for the re uh, resub there. It helps me keep going. It's been closer to making this financially viable. I really appreciate it. Hey, what's up? What up? It's a batch review. Thank you so much for the sub. Warms my heart. Primal down. Won't see play. It's fine. Zoltan Scoundrel. Not, again, a double buff. Might be okay in Dwarf decks because it does buff a whole row. Which is, and it's also a Zoltan. That's all good things. All really good things for Scoundrel. It also makes it so I can do something like Figus opening, spawn around the Dwarf. I can do Zoltan Scoundrel. Maybe damage my opponent's row. Then I play the card that gives all the... Zoltan's company, give extra armor to the row, and then back row the Zoltan Warrior for even more points. That is a viable line of play. Keep an eye on this. This actually might go into some dwarf decks. So that's really, really exciting. Next, Colossus and Freed. Uh, not, I don't think it's going anywhere. It's not bad. It's just not good. That's the problem. Gaunter to six. Step in the right direction, making it a little bit different than Morel, because Morel is just so much better. Step in the right way. Vivian Oriel. Okay, I want to talk about this. This card I want to talk about. Let me go ahead and get this one up. Because this is this is a big one. This is a big one. Keep keep an eye on this. Vivian Oriel is a 1 for 10. Boost self by the provisions of the unit out to the right. And all they're doing is changing unit to card. Which means... Which means... It works with scenarios. That's a big deal, guys. That is a big deal. Welcome, got the key, good RNG. We're doing some patch notes review and then got some spicy stuff coming. This is a huge deal. I don't know if it'll be Masquerade Ball. Obviously, Masquerade Ball is the highest expense in terms of uh, scenario, being a 14. Definitely not going to be used with Getty. But the, middle, uh, the reason not Ball is that it would take you out of Devotion. And right now, Nilfgaard struggles with getting cheap, good aristocrats. But for Siege, Haunt, Fane, Death, and Passy, they haven't really struggled with having good access to cards. Maybe Passy's a little power corrupt, but these three... There are plenty of great siege engines in the game. There are plenty of great death wish units in the game. And there are plenty of great elves in the game. Vivian comes down as a 15 point card. A 15 point card. That is a lot of freaking points. That is unbelievable. For a 10. For a 10. And it is a low risk high reward card. Like oftentimes, even if you get the scenario heat waved immediately, let's go back to it. Even if Vivian, uh, the scenario gets heatwaved immediately, immediately, Vivian's coming down, uh, probably can copy a 11 provision card, a 10 provision card, because one of those will stick, because now heatwave isn't there. So Vivian, in my worst, is probably a 12 for 10 in round three, and oftentimes will be a 15 point card. That's a big deal. Keep an eye on this card. This buff, I think, is going to sneak by people. It's particularly punishing for, I guess what I'm going to say, Syndicate, because Syndicate loves Devotion right now with Horse Sun Jr. And so they don't have Heat Wave, which means Scenario Stick. If Scenario Stick, then Vivian's going to come down as a 15-point card. You can put Bounty on it and kill it. It gives you one point in return because Bounty's off of base power, not boost. It's a big deal. Also, notably, the one that catches my eye in particular is Rodea Elves, because Rodea got a buff. So going round three, Rodea... Playing out your feign death, double proccing it in one turn, and then smacking that Vivian Oriole. That'll bit out next turn and go for 15 there. You can get dump. The point dump is insane, is effectively all I'm saying. The potential for elves to go wild of Oriole is awesome. So keep an eye on it. New family member, Dwanor. Dwanor, welcome to the Plain Talk fam. I'm glad you're joining us here today as we, we, we learn the. We're going to learn what parrots eat. Welcome aboard. Like what you see, check out the socials in the chat. Welcome to the family. I'm going to plug the socials in two seconds. Catching up, going, keep going. Manticore Venom, buff to, uh, it's organic, so buff to Arrakis Swarm again. YouTube gang, good to see you here making the jump. How's it going? How's it going? Manticore Venom, I should say. It's a good, it's like a 9 for 8, 10 for 8 with Arrakis Swarm. Fine. 
Honestly, more like to see Arrakis Venom seeing play than Manticore. Trial of Grasses. Trial of Grasses. Uh, that is a big deal. This is not... Keep an eye on this card. Trial of Grasses is a huge deal. I'm going, I'm going back to the deck builder. Because I, I do I want to highlight this card. Getting t 10 to 12 points for 6 is a huge deal. Alternatively, can be used offensively to reduce something like a Gord from 20 points to 12. Not terrible offensive. Also, deal 6 first. So you can kill things like Dunko with it. It's an alchemy. I don't think people are actually going to be running it with... I don't think people run it with Battle Trance, but technically would proc the heal. But this, this is a big buff. Because I can easily do something like to arms get a two-point Witcher. Or, well, no, two arms gets you a one-point Witcher. One-point Witcher and the Trial grasses it, plus 11. 11 for 6. That is a lot. A lot of value. This is, I've run this card before, for real, straight up in a deck, and been relatively okay. Was it the 24 for 25th card in the deck? Yes, one of my last additions to it. But at 6? Quartermaster? Yeah, this, this card is pretty good. This card is a big deal. Keep an eye in particular for Skellige. You wouldn't necessarily want to run this in Northern Realms Witchers because your two-point Witcher students become four-point adepts. But Skellige likes making a lot of students going very wide at very low value, setting up things like Mentor. Obviously, this would boost past, you know, the one point would not be damaged for the Mentor anymore. But Quartermaster to Arms really makes this card good. Keep an eye on this. Keep an eye on this. I've run it before in Skellige Witcher decks. I think you'll see it potentially creeping up again. Count Cadwell, the memes continue. Most, my favorite, probably the most viable play for this is doing something like transforming it of Cursed Knight, bringing it back of Necromancy. It's fine. Keep an eye on it, but nothing special here. Oh, actually, I just thought of a really funny meme. Give me a second. Hold on. I got to add a new deck to the deck list. I thought of something really dumb I can do with that card. Um, yeah, writing down a new deck idea. Man, I love patch ideas. Count. I don't want to spoil it because it's so funny. Wow, that would be really stupid. What a finisher. I got a really dumb idea for this card. Okay, not going to spoil it because I think it's really juicy. I'm just going to write down the idea. Well, I'll do that in a week or two. Add it to the list. Moving along. Moving along. Sorry. Octopus got a buff, which I really like. I was running Octopus in a really cool Master of Puppets deck, and Octopus getting a little bit more buff makes it safer. Six is a magic number. Most factions have five damage, whether it's access to something like Kodu Weapons, uh, assassinate with one unit next to it. Whether it's Nature's Rebuke, whether it's Boiling Oil. A lot of, lot of factions have damage to five. Six is harder. Aqua set six is very, very nice. And yes, Mr. Henrik, you're right. It is a Bamboozle buff for the Cadwell. Bamboozle, though, has never struggled with provision. You just bluff. Because <laughs> you don't care about round three. Rodea, we have talked about. So that's like the summary of for neutrals. Overall, really like it. Standouts, obviously, for meta are Shoop and Rodea. Standouts as like low key, please keep an eye on this, is definitely Trial of the Grass and Vivian. These buffs are a bigger deal. Keep keep an eye. Keep an eye. You might come to hate this card. Particularly Vivian might turn out to be a total juggernaut by getting letting it be oftentimes a 15, potentially 16 point play when copying a scenario, which is nuts. But keep an eye here. Going down to monsters. Ooh, baby. You guys wanted it. You know what? This time CDPR delivered, and I'm going to go through it all, and then let's talk a bit about the obvious change to CDPR's entire patching philosophy. Ruins going to 10. Rejoice. Cliffside, good to see you. Welcome. How's it going? Ashley Borg is here. Patty uh, JDR is here. Welcome all you guys. How's it going? How's it going? Desert Banshee. This is a bigger one. Ruins, fine. Desert Banshee's hot. I literally just had to turn my two non-premium Desert Banshees into premium today. Because Desert Banshee has gone from one of the worst consumes in the game to one of the best, if not the best. It is a Death Wish engine that has a consume. Like, seven points consume is, would be busted. Warrior is really good. It's still a double consume. It might still be better. But Desert Banshee may very well be the best consume. It's fighting for it. And, at, yeah, at four, it's just so good. It's just so freaking good. Unbelievable. Would strongly recommend doing some Death Wish experiments. Ah, uh, let's see. Catch up the chat, Vassal, monsters got nerfed. Way more balanced. Yeah, let's keep going about it. Duke, Lita, Arletta, was I in the Dandelion show? Put a link. We'll watch it in a second. I watched that clip. Anyways, Herds. Morkvarg might come back to SK decks. Elaborate, uh, Mr. Henry, because Morkvarg's been doing fine. Oh, you're talking about uh, Morkvarg, the damage one. Yeah, maybe. It would not necessarily surprise me. We'll keep talking about that. 
that's not a bad read, but also for the fact that with monster getting nerfed, unitless could come on the rise again to punish syndicate. And if unitless comes back, syndicate's going to need to go taller if there's coin spending, like Sea Jackal. Then you could see the result of Morkvarg coming back to deal with that. A lot of this leads that to that, but I think your actual conclusion there, Mork, uh, Mr. Hinner, is correct. That's a good thing. Why are you the most creative deck builder? Uh, if, if in terms of me, I just declare it proudly. A Fuchsia Briefs is also really creative, but I don't know. We both like having fun with the game. I would say. I don't focus on climbing. I just focus on having fun. All right. All right. Enough chitter chatter. Let's take a look at the monsters. Desert Man, should we talk about that? Cranthia. I was literally thinking about this last night. How I wonder if it would be 10 or 9. This is the correct choice for Cranthia. Why is this the correct choice for Cranthia? Because Cranthia is cr like seriously destroying the power of cards you can print in monsters that are in general, right? Because anytime you print a card in monsters, you have to be thinking, would Cranthia accidentally break that card? And the answer is for Bloody Mistress and Mamuna, yes. So what their solution was, Bloody Mistress goes to 11, Mamuna goes to 11, and from there, no more Cranthia problems. This, this is a true slaughter. Of note, Kara, where are you, my, my girl? Kickamore Queen now is 10. So you can go back to copying Cranthia or Kickamore, obviously... You can do some shenanigans of that, but getting a bunch of Kickamores is not nearly as good. You're trying to row pack, so you're not in a rush to get a bunch of copies. And if you put two on the same row, they buff each other anyway. So you could do grow bigger, but you grow faster, but not necessarily bigger in a long round. So I like this direction. I thought nine, 10 was good. Nine looks cleaner as a number, but 10 is probably where it's bounced. Nine looked really pretty of like Siri Nova and copy nines, but no. One thing you should keep in mind is this is basically an endorsement from CDPR saying Koshi interaction of Cranthia is fine and we're not interested in changing it. So expect some Koshi. I think that's where Monsters is going next. But we'll keep talking about it. As we mentioned, Bloody Mistress and Mamuna are now 11. Kickamore Queen got a huge buff. 5 to 4, which isn't really a nerf because it's a Thrive card. 11 to 10, got some armor. It's, it's just a buff. Kickamore got buffed. It's very nice. Plague got buffed. Yeah, Koshi is a 10 uh, provision card uh, meta. So, Koshi is going to be where Monsters goes next. Plague Maiden got a buff. Death Wish is getting some love. Love to see that. Werewolf is now 5. That's fine. It's, it does not worth mentioning. Imrif got us some 2 buffs. Always keep an eye on this. I don't think it's quite good enough there. I think Imrif needs a slightly better ability. Something else that works with it besides just boosting from your hand and drawing a card. Ain't bad, though. Ain't bad. It would be really good in Syndicate because then I could discard Abomination. Go plus what? 13 and not have to play abomination that'd be really good but mf ironically is better in syndicate than monsters it's obviously a monster card that'll never happen oh yeah and self eater has now gone to the magical five number we talked about that earlier five is an absolute beating sebus 89 welcome to the plane talk family i'm glad you're joining us here today as we eat an all-you-can-eat seafood buffet welcome aboard like what you see check out the socials you know what i'm gonna plug them boom i'm in the middle of plug the socials Ooh, miss j is still here obviously dodge on uh, I don't know. I was in the mood to plug it. I knew you were here, Miss J. I, my mind was like, John, I really feel like plugging the socials. So I did. Sorry. Sorry. I did take a bit of hype. I'll let you do in the future. My mind was just screaming I wanted to plug the socials. But you're welcome. Follow hype indeed. And welcome. Anyways, MRF probably needs more love. And carrying on, carrying on. So let's go ahead and just talk about this. And uh, Kickamore lost an armor to three. Three is a big deal because now Dip in the Pontar kills it. Let's talk about this. This is actually a really interesting patch. This is why I am so optimistic and positive on this patch. Basically, you saw CDPR take the most powerful deck, nerf it, so now the meta will change a little bit, while also giving buffs in to other factions and archetypes within that type. So that's really, really good, right? Monster is Death Wish. Hey, in Arrakis and like Arrakis spam, get buffs. You guys, we're going to help you guys out because we know we're about to nerf. Bloody Mistress, Self Eater, and Mamuna. We're going to actually, we are, and kick more Warrior, which is going to be much more vulnerable now. We're going to kick it down. That is a huge deal. Now, did monsters deserve all these nerfs? Probably not. Kickamore was, I think, fine at four armor, to be honest. I think that would have been just fine. What is the future of monsters? They're still going to be viable. Monsters is the one, it's still, I would argue to say that it's monsters and Nilfgaard fighting for best design faction in the game. Skeletor are not too far behind. Really interesting to find archetypes that work well with each other in interesting ways. The, what's going to happen here is Koshi will become the new deck for monsters. Monsters will probably be now weaker than Syndicate. 
but still tier one, tier two. Still a great deck. Keep an eye out for it. Coach GLB is still in meta. And uh, yeah, nothing too big. Force and H will become the dominant type for monsters. You might see people move away from Bloody Mistress at 11. It's a little rough. And you might see them. I, I expect going to Coast will be the answer here. Mamuna will still see play at 11. It's really that good of a card. Kickamore Warrior will probably still see play as a result. Self Eater will still see play at a 5. It's good. If Self Eater turns out to be really bad, Larva will just come back in. So, end of the day, Coast is back on the menu, boys and girls, and everyone. Yeah, and everyone. Gotta be inclusive. Gotta get better at that. Moving along, basic monsters, they're going to be fine. Don't worry about them too much, but they're not going to be oppressive. PTJ, still tier one. Thank you, thank you. Moving along, Jaxa, good to see you here. Uh, perfect. And Dwanner hooked up somebody with new patch notes. Appreciate it. All right, Jaxa, new patch notes. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Sunny days, good to see you. Let's go down to Skellige. Minor buff here. Let's look at Blacksmith. I think this is actually a good buff, if I recall. What does Blacksmith even do? Blacksmith. Let's take a look, guys, because I don't think any of us remember what this card does. It'll now be a 4 for 4, boost an allied unit by 1. The so 5 for 4, gains a charge unit by a warrior. That's sweet. Love it. I don't know if it's as good as to replace some of the other warrior cards, but, you know, another step to the 4 for 4 engines existing in this game. That's a, that's a positive one in my book. Hey, May Spear Maiden? Okay, I don't even know what Spear Maiden is. Is it even worth talking about? What Spear Maiden even do? Ooh, interesting. Okay. Uh, no, wrong view. That's the view. Damage enemy unit by two and damage level by two is six for four now. So six for four, but with damage and re that's, I mean, this is like better Grizzly Rares. You want damage in most cases over like keeping points yourself because of the like assassinate gets more value on you if you're tall, et cetera, et cetera. But hey, my spearman, that's not, that's not bad. And now you can heal it as well, obviously, if you're running something like Getty. Or not Getty, but Battle Trance. Like it, like it. That's a good buff, actually. Huh. Consideration for the casino. Consideration for the casino, the highest praise. Let's see. Herald, damage yourself by two. That's actually really good. A lot of times, you're if you're playing Herald in round one, you're in the pickle, you're probably bringing back a warrior you really need. It's going to be fine. Like This will come into play very, very rarely. It helps uh, Casino, though. Helps Casino, because sometimes you revive the Cultist that kills itself when it goes down to Berserk 3, I think. So that helps that card be a little bit better. Small buff, nothing big. Program Preacher is fighting now for best Druid, going from 5 to 4, making Getty super playable. This one's hot. Keep an eye on this. There have been a lot of good Druids added to the game. There are a lot of great synergies with Druid in Skellige. I'm not sure this is going to be enough to push it through, but this type of buff is a big deal. When you are buffing bronzes, you're giving two extra provisions to that deck, right? Not one, two. That's why buffing a bronze on provision is such a, such a bigger deal than buffing it for a gold. So keep an eye on Dex. Tuxedo, welcome. How's it going? Rhinos is here. Welcome. The Deke is here. Welcome. Riff. Oh my gosh. So many people. Tin Boy's here. I think Tin Boy's been here. Fading Blob. Welcome. Gosh, I'm behind them welcoming everyone here. All right. Refocusing. Refocusing. He may scout locked on red uh, on range draw. I like it. I like it. That's just like a Q, uh, QOL, giving you a bit of choice if you want to actually play out our. Do you want to discard more choices? Is good for the game. That's the right kind of QR quality of life change. I like to see. Q search is down to seven. Is it even worth it? Is this what twelve for seven now potentially? Eleven for seven. It's right now, it's, it'll be a 6 for 7 with Bloodthirst 3 boost self by 5. So, keep an eye on that. That's actually not too bad. Not great, but not bad. It's a, it's a card. The this one's a bigger one. Jutta buffing Ice going down to 7. Keep Remind yourself that Ice got a, a quietly some okay buffs here. Blacksmith and Dimitar Jutta. Keep an eye there. I don't think it'll be tier 1. But once again, we find ourselves Skellige. Or once again, we find how good Skellige is designed. Because you just saw just a handful of buffs. Druids warriors iced or oh, self damage like a lot of things got buffed and it's excellent and by the way tour search is really good round three with patch of fury for the guaranteed bloodthirst three so keep an eye on that as well moving along guys 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 you've been asking for it i know you've been asking for it. you've been thirsting for it i've and i've told you all time and time again hang in there hang in there linked patch notes would deliver and here we are guys cohen Ordering. I have no idea if they're good or not. Are we going to play these both? 
Absolutely. I'm going to give you guys decks that are playable with both those cards. If God will let me, yes, I'll do it for you. You guys have been begging me, begging me, begging me for it. And I will do my best to deliver it onto you. That is mm, so good to see. So good to see, guys. I, I'm glad we get to deliver. Next, Drog, Zeal. Now you don't have to play Drog on the road. You want to transform. It means potentially even more reverence. And that's, that's just super sick. That's just sick. It's just good. It's small buff to Drog. I like it. It's a step in the right direction. Beautiful. Is Cohen playable now? I have no idea. Oh, yeah. Low-key buff the Cosmo as well. Because now I can flip it, get Drog, and then turn Cosmo immediately into a big reverent, which is also low-key. Really sick. I'm looking forward to that interaction. Next, Mad Kenyon. Or Kian? Kian? Is that even good? Kian. Uh, let's see. Formation, order, damage unit by the amounts boosted, death blow restore. Death blow now resets. I don't think it's good. But it's fine. It is a Witcher, though. Witchers are good to buff. It's okay. I don't think it's going to exactly blow minds here. It's okay. Knighthood is actually something I'm really excited about. Because Knighthood, buff a card fi randomly on a row five times. Or buff. It, it's delirium, but positive for you. Instead of negative for your opponent. But well, putting this on a tridom turns this into a 10 for 5, and that's really good. And 5 of those points is random damage, which is pretty darn good. Sunny Days, Drog from Cosmo and Alzer. Yeah, I agree. I agree, Sunny Days. Huge, indeed. Nighthood actually looks playable. Keep an eye on this. I think it'll make you all very upset. Because opening tridom and, not, and your opponent either having to say, I need to answer this, or a 10-point play might happen next turn, is rough. I like it. And even if you don't get to do much of it, it can be a five for five and reset the warfare or um yeah, warfare cards. No, it is a warfare card. It does resupply, resupply. Reset the resupply cards. Should be okay. I think I think this will see play. A little bit. A pinch. Just a pinch. Botchling is mess still. We're gonna I'm not I have no comments on it. Reverend though, I do have comments on. This is a big deal. It goes in line with the engine buffs on four. But Reverend isn't un is unlike the other engines. It's not like one per turn. Reverend's one of the few cards in the game that can really be plus four a turn. Kill my opponent's one point unit. I spawn a three point unit. Then it honestly has another damage. Really like a five per turn, right? Even, but it might stop. My obviously the engine might stop at one point. But that's insane. Keep an eye on this. That's a huge buff. It's not small. It makes Sabrina surprisingly playable. So it's pretty sick. Pretty darn sick. Uh, what's the patch notes timer? We just go for everything. There's no timer. I just talk until I have my thoughts out. Good to see you, Acoustic. Uh, good to see you here. Keep an eye on that. Tissia. Just, uh, now, actually, Tissia is making a good comment here. 12 to 10. Good for Patience Mages. Good for Arch Griffin. And of note, Arch Griffin is not patched here. From what I can tell, the Tissia gets to survive. If, they, if, if Arch Griffin was a problem, they would have patched it. It actually, somebody tried to run it at a top 64 qualifier to try to get to an open. It is not a problem. CDBR has left that alone. They've given it a two provision buff to the deck. That is pretty spicy. Uh, I'll be uh, flirting with some Arch Griffin in the near future. Moving along, moving along. We got Panther on five to four. What does Panther even do? I don't remember. Do the deck builder. Uh, so it is not great. Seven for four or three. It's basically a three for four of bleeding four. How you'd run it. Who cares? Moving along. What else have we got here for the buffs for poor good old Squirtail? Dried Ranger's buff is clearly a step in the wrong direction because that's the Harmony Poison one. Why would I want more damage on a poison card? Bleh. 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 Once again, we remind ourselves that CDPR eats Harmony. Confirmed. Fact. That's how it goes. Ifling got a buff, so there's a little bit of hand buffing action here, which is good. Nothing too special. Sursa. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that another. I'm so glad another harmony card. Uh, whoops. Harmony card that deals damage got a buff. Like, that is, that is what we want to see. Like, harmony. Uh, a harmony card that deals damage and boosts cards in hand. Like, that is, that is the kind of buffs harmony needs. Am I right, guys? Are, are, are we, isn't that exactly what we need? I mean, everyone's like, man, Harmony needs more hand buff. That, that is what people need. Harmony needs more hand buff. And Harmony needs more dryads of Harmony, right? Like, if I type in the word Harmony, 
there is only one, two, three, four, five cards that are related to dryads. And if you want to say, John, you don't have to pick a dryad here, fine. Only four of the nine harmony cards in the game are dryad related. I'm so glad I get to run more dryads. I am so glad I get to run more dryads. Like that is what harmony needs. It, it, they're, they're, they really, they're like, I don't know what pack they made of the devil. And we're going to talk about packs of the devil in a second, but like harmony just got I, uh, CDPR hates Harmony confirmed, never playable. I, I'm not, I'm honestly, Harmony is so bad, even with these buffs. I am still not going to ever buff them or, or play them. I, 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 they're literally still unplayable. I've tried so hard so many times to play it. I've never made a good playable Harmony deck that I felt good about worth sharing, which is pretty, pretty darn bad. So that's where we're at. Crazy Killer. Where are we? We have Nilfgaard Syndicate left. And then just kind of like an overall review wrap up kind of a statement. That's where we're at in the that's where we're at in the patch notes here. But Grandar's backup being is going well. 13 for 8 doesn't seem nah too bad. Uh Sursa, eh, maybe it can be a 13 for 8. I, I think I'm not I'm not optimistic. Not optimistic. I could see Sursa played in a deck that isn't harmony though. That could be that could be potentially a play. There's a played in a non-harming deck and just getting it. Oh, Kian. Mr. Kian comment. Kian got a pretty high ceiling while still be on the board of stay on the build of kill. There's a more, right, McRandar, but they have to have a tall unit for Mad Kian to really make full advantage of it. It might be okay. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm uh, too harsh on this card. But if it kills something, then it loses its uh resets power, which is a downside. Because I can't kill my opponent's stuff. N4, L4, N83. Welcome to the Plain Talk family. I'm honored you're joining us here today as we learn how to play Texas Hold'em. Gecko is 174. I'm glad you could welcome to the Plain Talk family. I'm glad you could join us here today as we watch some Overwatch. I don't know. Is that, is that so popular game? I, I, I you'd like to. I like Overwatch back in the day. If you like both of you guys, welcome to the family. If you like what you see, check out the socials that Miss J so kindly plugged. And welcome, welcome, welcome. Glad you guys are both here. Welcome to the family. Maybe that's too harsh on Mad K and we'll see, we'll see. This card might be really good. Yeah, it's a fair, it's a fair point. Because he has formation. I can play like a rat of it. It's playing fra eh, oh, man, I'm not I'm not hundred percent sold. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see a Mad Can. We'll see. Overall, probably tell it gets lackluster buffs. Is this just like the pity throw? It's been like that for a while. Moving along. Yes, McRandar. You have to kill, not kill it, but killing is like the best part of damage. That's fair, McGrandar. Maybe I'm too hard on Mad Kion. Maybe, maybe I'm a little rough on the guy. Uh, he's a happy, angry-looking witcher. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I was a bit too harsh. I confess. Hi, God. I got to follow the man. Oh, praise. Flattery. I'm honored. Thank you so much. It's my favorite weakness. How are you, my friend? How are you, N4L4? And I'm sure I'm saying your name wrong, 83. But hello and welcome. How are you? Moving on Nilfgaard, doesn't matter. It's a bad 6 for 6 aristocrat. You're going to want to run False Siri instead if you need a 6 for 6 because agents are really abundant because of Blightmakers. Uh, Murion, yeah, there's, there's already so many good 4 Nilfgaard drops, that, or Nilfgaard cards. I don't think this will see much play, if any. And you have to have a tactic for it to be a 7 for 4, if I recall. It's like deal 2, bleed 2, if I recall. Is that what it does, John? Yeah, deal 2, bleed 2. It's like fine. But with Tortoise being so reliable, I'd probably go for Tortoise instead. Vivian Atabras, 9 to 8. Still an okay card. Nothing special there. Probably can go to 7. So, Nilfgaard doesn't... I got, like, very few buffs. But, like, paradoxically, Nilfgaard almost never needs buffs. Why? Because it's a really well-defined faction. If we were to go over the meta report, our 26, we could see right very recently, Assimilate Nilfgaard going ahead and became, according to TLG, the third best deck in the meta right now, which is mind-blowing. Right, and you right at the end, if the meta if the meta develops long enough, Nilfgaard has the tools to put together something nasty. Run into this plenty of times on ladder. It's cool. That's Nilfgaard for you. The sign of a good well designed faction. A faction, no matter what the meta is, that can always creep in anyways. Going back over to no, I want to talk about that at the end. Here, Nilfgaard, much like Scoriatel, kinda of like a little pity toss. Spell Scoriatel carries a faction, Nilfgaard will always find a way. Cool. Syndicate. Damnation no longer needs targets. Sweet. Or at least them to be adjacent. Probably still unplayable. There's not enough damage set up. I could see Damnation though sneaking its way into non-Firesworn decks. Despite them being Firesworn spawns, 
Tunnel Drill and Horse Sun Jr. is the setup you need for this card. To deal, what is it? Deal three damage, no, two damage to three ra three targeted units now. Everyone that kills spawns a two unit, a two point fire sworn, whatever. And so it can be a very much a 12 for six. But damnation, it better be a 12 for six. Is it 12 for seven? Uh, never mind. This card's trash. It's actually still seven. Yeah, it's just trash. All right, moving on. I have no interest for it. I have no interest in that card. Moving along. Tim Boy got a buff. It's provision wise, which is good. It makes it more competitive in one of the most competitive areas, which is upper end golds for Syndicate. Syndicate has so many great options. I really like this now because if you get rid of monsters, only Syndicate is going to have to be the faction that reigns in Spell Square Tell. Tim Boy is a nice tool for that because Spell Square Tells does such a good job swarming the board. Tim Boy can really get value. Well, Frighteners to a 12. Love that. Sausage Maker, unplayable, but. The fact that you can now profit and then click the fee immediately to give a resilience is very satisfying. Walter. Walter, this one is a this buff actually caught my eye. Let's talk about Walter. I liked Walter a little bit. Uh no, no, no. Ah! Here we are. Walter. We'll create and play a bronze and the get faction card. As a four for eight. Mm, not too bad. Not too bad. There are a lot of good syndicate bronzes these days, right? It can be, it just, there's just a lot of good syndicate bronze cards. And that is really interesting to me. And let's see, color, bronze. There just are a lot of good syndicate bronzes. Bounce Oak, Fall Knights, Eavesdrop, Payday, all the fives are relatively playable. You're pretty much guaranteed to get at least five points off the create at minimum. Not terrible. Are you playing line pockets? You hit a good crime. Hey, you know, you're in a better shape. It's a four for eight. The only thing I don't like is it isn't thin or anything like that. I don't know if it'll see play, but eh, long shot. It's super over the moon thing. Eh, I don't know if I'd call it even that, but it was interesting to me. It caught my eye. It seemed bizarre. Sausage maker. I don't know if sausage makers are ever going to see play guys because Vandergriff doesn't seem play as a resilience dude that protects himself. I'm, I'm doubtful that I'm doubtful. The saucer maker will see play. I'm sorry. Plug of Broom Baker going to 11 means good old monster hyper thin is a little more playable now. It's the hybrid card between the two factions. And Mutant Killer got a minor buff, but to be honest, I don't even remember what it does. It doesn't really matter. Four Provision Syndicate is one of the most difficult slots to break into the game in the game because Passive Lord Peaches and Tax Collector are so good and Sea Jackal is there that I, I, there are, I, it's hard for me to imagine really anything breaking in there. Fiztech Trafficker is there. Fiztech is there. Dip in the Pontar is there. Smuggle is there. It's really hard for me to imagine any card really breaking in. What's it? I'll check Meat and Killer, guys. I just don't see any card that it, most of the five cards don't, couldn't even break the slot at four. It's a seven for four at best. If you don't have Horde, it's a five for four. No, now they're nerfing the power too, right? Trash card. Moving on. Yes, it's a four for four or four, uh, three for one or a three deal. I just, it's trash. Moving on. Cool. Bunch of, bunch of game fixes. Not really worried about any of these. They're all just like nice things, but they're all like nice. I'm glad they fixed them. Which so that makes me happy. And yeah, that's really, that's really it. There's nothing too fancy here at all. Anything else here that is of note? Not really. Not really. Everything else is fine. I think we've covered it all. Why don't we do a quick wrap up? I think. Do you think SK Warriors become meta again? No, I do not think. Uh, I said I do not think it will. They get some nice buffs. I don't think it'll be enough to really push them out. What will the meta look like? Well, I think we can make some pretty good educated guesses. Syndicate is likely going to be very, very good. Once again, the biggest complaint. I'm glad that nothing's loading here. Here we go. Biggest complaint is Tunnel Drill somehow got by again without any nerfs. Line Pockets got by without losing a provision. I think it's ridiculous. I think line pockets at 14, tunnel at eight is correct for both those cards, uh, for leader ability and card. But overall, fine. We'll probably enter a syndicate meta. Bellscoy Tell is going to take a fall, a little bit of one, because tunnel drill is so darn good against their deck because you can set up three things and Horse and Junior or tunnel drill can come down and wipe your board. 
So you can't get the sorceress, seer of the orbs, and the whisperer. Like, bad things happen. Koshi is going to replace monsters. You might see Bloody Mistress not make the decks anymore. She knows is worth still playing. Bloody, because even at 10 for 13, I actually think this card's not better than Bloody Mistress. And if you are not going to be, you need to free up provision, right? Because you want to keep Mamuna. You're going to cut something here. Add a Striga is the obvious cut. But this deck will continue to make for, uh, progress. Kikamore, honestly, might still be run. Just straight up. I think Kikamore is still worth running over something like a Noon Wraith. So they're going to keep, uh, keep seeing it. And uh, I think it's really it. I think Siege and Drog and Shoop and Rodea are really interesting for bringing in new stuff to the meta. Nilfgaard will keep on finding ways to survive. Nilfgaard always finds a way to survive. Northern Realms is my guess at the faction most likely to sneak back into the meta out of the Forgotten 2. I think Northern Realms is better positioned to do so than Skellige. Poor Skellige. I don't think Melusine is the way, but it did get some good buffs. But with that said... Skellige Druids already had some really powerful stuff. Like, a Singer is a huge deal, and it's not enough to power through right now in the meta. That's not good. Bring Willow, 1564. Welcome to the Plain Dog, or 65. 1565. Welcome to the Plain Dog family. I'm glad you could join us here today as we fish, go fishing in a pond. Welcome aboard. Like we see, check out the YouTube, Discord, Twitter, they're popping, and welcome to the family. Morkvark, as Mr. Hanark pointed out earlier, might get better because you'll see if people go, so Syndicate's the best deck. And it's damage oriented bounty, you'll see people go to unitless. If unitless goes, Syndicate will have to react by having more things like Sea Jack, where they go tall if they run into a deck that is going unitless, meaning stuff like Morkvarg will be better positioned in the meta. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, a couple long shots, right? Trial of Grasses, maybe SK Witchers will be okay. Some kind of SK Witcher controls, I think, more likely than Druids entering meta. I also think some kind of Northern Realm shenanigans, again, more likely. What was the other thought, though? Oh, Vivian Oriel, keep an eye on her. Or, or I think it's Oriel. How do I say it? I don't know. Keep an eye on that. That's really good. And that is my initial thoughts. Now, I do want to talk even bigger picture real quick. Summarizing up. Let's talk about Syndicate. Here, here are my thoughts on what's going on in Syndicate. It's just speculation. Just speculation. And Sid, and Vivian will now, next pa or tomorrow, starting tomorrow, will buff herself from one point... Then boost herself relative to the amount of provisions to the card to the right. So I can boost off of scenarios now. So she will often hit as a 15 for 10, which is really, really, really good. So if we back up, guys, we're going to have to back up like nine months. Syndicate was unplayable. It was an unplayable faction. Story time with John. We're going, we're going story time with John. It was unplayable. And then, ever since then, starting at the start of this year, roughly, Became very good. My hypothesis is that CDPR, somebody was panicking. Some tech design was panicking. And they said, oh my gosh, oh my goodness, Syndicate is unplayable. An entire faction hasn't been played. We can't find a way to make it good. So what did they do? They found Gaunter Odim. That's right, they found Gaunter Odim and they made a deal with the devil. And Gaunter was like, so I hear you want Syndicate playable. And they said, yes, and we'll give you the souls of three unpaid interns. Three unpaid interns make it possible. And Gaunter was like, no, 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 no. I do not want the souls of three unpaid interns. I would like a rule, and the rule was simple. You cannot nerf Syndicate after I bring it back to power. And they agreed, desperate, desperate, to bring Syndicate back into the game. And thus, Cleaver came into being. Tunnel Drill was reworked. And all of a sudden, everything was horrifying and powerful again. And they came in there. And they came in there. And they said, Gaunter, Gaunter. And Gaunter was like, hello. I've seen you've returned. Like, Gaunter, look, I know we said. I know we said we aren't going to nerf Syndicate. But we re like to renegotiate the deal because this is getting out of control. And Gaunter was like, that is no problem. I will allow you to do some working on Syndicate. But there's a catch. You will let me rework Pirate's Cove. And CDPR thought, and they looked at Pirate's Cove, the, Cove, the worst Syndicate leader ability, spawns a Sea Jackal and gives you four coins. And they said, how bad could it be? How bad could the Syndicate be letting Gaunter buff this? Slightly reworking the leader ability. Well, they, Gaunter did, you know, they did some minor nerfs to Syndicate, touched the tunnel drill, 
And then Pirate's Cove got reworked to spawn two Sea Jackals. And CDPR was like, that's it? That's all Gaunter or Dim wanted? And then boom, Pirate's Cove crushes the entire meta. From worst leader ability, one week leader, one week later, people realized how much stronger it was and the entire game changed. No longer do you have to run Siege Jackals of your own. You could never over profit. You could just spawn a Siege Jackal and go for both rounds. And they went back to Gaunter and they said, Gaunter, Gaunter. The players are unhappy. Pirate's Cove has crushed the meta. Well, we would like to strike the same deal again. You got us good, but this time we'd like to once more do it. And Gaunter was like, it's okay. You can nerf the Pirate's Cove. I, I just want a slight buff to Jackpot, the newest worst ability. They were like, you want to buff Jackpot? Yes, a minor tweak. One sentence on that card, on that leader ability. Well, CDBR was like, fine, fine, you can do it. And they were like, all right. Gaunter was like, it's going to be fine. And then they, boom, they reworked Jackpot. And all of a sudden, Jackpot, tier one, no more cap on the coins if it says profit and it over profits boost itself. Breaks the entire meta. And then they go back and they were like, Gaunter, you got us good again. Maybe we'll stop letting you rework leader abilities. What, what, I have no more of that, but we do need to brain things in. They're like, no problem, we will nerf the jackpot. I just want to give Bounty a few buffs. The forgotten syndicate archetype, a little tweak here or there. And CDPR agreed, and here we are, guys. Back to line pockets, Bounty, and everything else. And at this point, CDPR has given up negotiating of Gaunter. Dim Syndicate's here to say tier one for life. That is, that is full confirmed. And CDPR has made it so Gaunter can just farm the souls of broken Gwent players who will trade their souls in. Trade their souls in for any alternative. And that's the story how Sto that is the story of how Storybook Ball came to be. That's right, baby. Storybook Ball is Gaunter's version to farm. Souls from broken Gwent players. That is it. That's, that is lore. That is canon. That is 100% accurate. You are all welcome. I spoiled it. That is everything that is explaining how Syndicate works in the game. That is the origin story of Storybook Brawl. You're welcome. Love that name. Thank you. Thank you. About 10 out of 10. You see a question coming? Nope. Got you off guard. Geronimo, Nunsoul, welcome. Zenardo, okay, welcome. Orma plays. Hello. Cheers. All right. Final thoughts. I actually think CDPR, though, jokes aside, is going in a good direction. Is going in a good direction because they're getting more hands on with the patches after new cards are released. In the past, the first one that ever broke my heart, they released all the leader abilities. Tunnel Drill broke the meta. They moved it up by one provision, and that was the only change they made. They figured out they want a heavier hand on nerfs and a heavier hand on buffs. That is healthy for the game. I'm optimistic about the long term direction. Thank you. That was, that was pretty good. Pretty good. Three CDPR bug testers. Maybe, Sadiq, maybe. That is, I, I'm, I'm optimistic about direction. I do want to do one final point out here. One final point out, which is also about the Gwent community. Calling out the Gwent community, we're going back to the YouTube view. Because I actually want to talk about polls. There was a Reddit poll. And I want to talk about the negativity of Reddit versus the negativity on YouTube, which I think is a bigger Gwent community. I'll screw, do a little bit. Of, yeah, we'll do a quick close-up here. Oh, no, they don't have to do a close-up. Okay. With 600 votes versus this poll, this poll stinks. Uh, pop the view. Great, playable, mixed opinion, and horrible. I was excited about this. I think the direction is great. It missed a little bit, but overall, the patch is on point. The poll is very negative, and most people have mixed opinion, thinks it's horrible, and thinks some think it's playable. It's like a really negative poll. Notably, horrible is really popular as an option on Reddit. I put out my own poll. 804 vo or 40 votes, relative same size. Beautiful bell curve. People think it's a fine patch. So I just want to simply point out, if you're getting all your news from Reddit, people are really negative. More people interact on YouTube. This poll came out three hours ago. My poll came out three hours ago. 200 additional votes. And it's a much more, hey, it's fine. Is Gwent dying? No. Is CBR going in a good direction? Yes. Just keep that in mind, guys. Just keep that in mind. When you're battling all the negativity, Gwent's doing okay. And that's the wrap up on the 9.3 patch. Shout out to Ahmed Ali and McRandar for all their generous support on Patreon.